Hey, nature photographers, it's Lee Hoy, and I'm back with a video of a first. This video is in direct response to several comments I've received regarding color space. I mentioned in the OM1 Mark II unboxing and quick setup uh, video that I always choose to shoot an Adobe RGB instead of sRGB because you get bigger files, more data, and more information to work with. And I've had quite a few folks comment saying that no, the two are the same. And I thought it would be fun to quantitatively and visually demonstrate that they're wrong. Sorry, you know, you guys know me, but that's the fact. I am going to show you that I just set up, decided to set up a tripod right here in my living room using an OM-1 Mark I and also using the MZUCO 7-14 f2.8 Pro lens. I just pointed the lens right there at my fireplace mantle, the wall, because I've got all different tonalities, colors, textures, you know, with the taxidermy, the skulls, the, the dark part in the fireplace. And I thought it'd be a nice cross photo to take a picture of to demonstrate the differences in these two profiles. So if you're looking forward to the results of that little test, stay tuned. Howdy from West Texas. I'm Lee Hoy, professional nature photographer, and this is my YouTube channel, Lee Hoy Photography. I'm an OM system ambassador, photography workshop instructor for Wildside Nature Tours of Precision Camera and Video, and contributing author for the Journal of Wildlife Photography. All right, well, the first thing I want to show you is that these two images are indeed not identical. They can't be. The Adobe RGB color space is plain and simple larger than the sRGB. Several folks have tried to say that you won't notice any difference in the raw file. I'm gonna prove that wrong. They say there's really not any difference in the data you collect. I'm gonna show you that that's incorrect as well. So the first thing I wanna do is let's jump into my finder here on my MacBook. And I'm gonna show you that in fact, one file is larger than the other. Now you would assume if I took two images and I'll show you in Lightroom that these two images were taken 11 seconds apart. I will also prove that I've done nothing else to the images except change the color space. Okay, so 11 seconds apart, light didn't change outside, everything else is the same. Well, let's look at my finder here real quick. So if you notice image 414316, that is the Adobe RGB file. Image 414317, that is the sRGB raw file. Now, there's an interesting little thing you'll notice off to the right when it comes to image size. The Adobe RGB file is 18.9 megabytes. The sRGB file is 18.8. And I can already hear them now, well, it's not that much of a difference. I'm gonna show you visually, so before you get your fingers chatting away on a comment, already, they're not the exact same. They're different. And everything else is constant. Why is one bigger than the other? Because you collected more data. Because Adobe RGB is a bigger color space. It's common sense, really. All right, so that's one thing we've demonstrated. Next, let's jump over into Lightroom and take a look there. All right, so now we're in Lightroom and I'm in the library module. And before we look at anything hardcore quantitatively, I would like for you to just take a look at the two images just looking to see if you can notice any differences. Can you tell any? Let's just see. So in order to make it a little easier, I'm just gonna hide the end tabs here. Whoops, I'm gonna hide the end tabs here in Lightroom, okay? And we're gonna blacken the screen so that all we're looking at are the two images. So this is the Adobe RGB file, sRGB. Adobe, sRGB. One more time, Adobe, sRGB. Now, I'm pretty sure that most people paying attention here can tell there's a difference, can't you? In fact, it's a pretty good difference. So again, Adobe, sRGB. There's clearly a difference in the two raw files and everything else is equal except color space. So now one person said, well, yeah, in library module, you might notice a difference but not necessarily in develop. Well, okay, so let's hop into the develop module. All right, here are the two images, okay? And 
we are going to now do a comparison between the two images here in the develop module. So I'm on the Adobe RGB, sRGB, Adobe RGB, sRGB, Adobe. I think it's pretty clear there's some differences, aren't there? But that's just looking at the two images visually, and I think we see there's some differences. How about let's jump back over to the library module, okay? Let's get those, let's get the first image and let's pull up the, let's pull up our first image here. Again, 414316, taken at 20630, okay? Now, so that you know I'm comparing the two images, here's the 20641, 11 seconds later, and that's the sRGB file. Now, let's take a look at, I know you might question, well, he probably changed the exposure. So two and a half seconds at F16, ISO 400, seven millimeters. This is the Adobe RGB, sRGB. Two and a half seconds, F16, ISO 400, seven millimeters. Hmm. Exposure settings can't explain the difference. Now, when I click on the two images, I want you to watch up here in the upper right. Watch the histogram and tell me if you don't notice some changes between the two files. Ready? Hmm, Adobe, sRGB, Adobe, sRGB, Adobe, sRGB. There's clearly a difference. I feel like I'm on Sesame Street. Near, far, near, far. <laughs> different, different. <laughs> They're not the same. Oh, okay. We're in the library module. Let's go to the develop module. All right, let's, let's click on the first one. Adobe RGB, watch the histogram. Hmm. Hmm. Riddle me this one, Batman. Why could that possibly be? More data? I think so. All right, all right. So now some people will say, well, he probably went into something in develop and made a few tweaks here and there to, to make it look different. Well, okay, let's walk through Lightroom and check that, shall we? Good question. Color profile, which is different than color space, is camera muted. White balance is left as shot at 3,400 for temp and minus three for tint. There are no changes in the basic module. Okay, let's go to the sRGB. Camera muted, same. 3400 temp, minus three tint, same. No changes in the basic module. Let's compare the tone curve while we're here in the sRGB. No changes. Now, as I click to the Adobe file, watch the histogram there in the tone curve. Oh, look at there. It's different. No changes. Color mixer, no changes. Color grading, no changes. Sharpening and noise reduction, these would have nothing to do. Lens correction, transform, nothing. Lens blur, nothing. No vignetting, and the calibration's the same. Let's check over here. Is he lying? No, look at there. No noise reduction, no sharpening, no lens correction, no transform, no lens blur, no effects, no calibration changes. They're the exact same files, except that one is a different color space. And clearly I've demonstrated both visually and quantitatively that they're not the same files. But now I really want you to take a look at areas where this would really stand out. Because clearly there is a difference, but how much of a difference? So I'm gonna select the two images, and in the library module, I'm gonna click the compare, okay? So just so that we can demonstrate, here's the first image. This is Adobe RGB, second image, sRGB. What I really want us to watch is the dark area here in the fireplace, okay? Now there's a log on the grate, which has been there for years because I hate having fires in a fireplace. But I want you to look in particular at this area right here, okay? This area, I'm at 300%. I almost never go to this level of detail to look at things. Now over here, 
is the sRGB. And clearly there's much more data. You can see much more tones. This is darker. This is, if you can't tell the difference, you either need to get your monitor calibrated or your eyesight fixed because there's definitely a difference, okay? Even, even the great here is paler than it is here, all right? So for micro four thirds, what does this mean? It means we're collecting more data, particularly here in the shadows, which for micro four thirds is huge. That's a great help. The more data you have in your file, the more data that you have when you go into DXOP Raw 3, when you work it in Lightroom, Topaz, Sharpen, or, or Gigapixel, whatever software you're going into, Capture One, right? DXO Pure Lab, whatever. Cap, you know, you, any of those, plain and simple, in the raw file on the left versus the raw file on the right, there's more data. That, my friends, is quantitatively proven and visually proven. You can see the difference as well as measure the difference looking at the file size. So I'd like to thank you guys for putting all those comments in there. And yes, it's great to do a video that's right where I'm right, because God knows my wife tells me I'm wrong enough. But hey, listen, guys, 100%, I'm not always right. Um, you know, I believe the photography community should be a two-way learning street. And so I'm really appreciative of those of you that throw comments out there challenging things that I've stated or whatnot, because it'll either reinforce what I already know and allow me to share that with you, or I'll learn and grow as a photographer myself. But damn, if it doesn't feel good to be proven right in this particular case. Um, again, when it comes to photography, my goal is to collect as much information as possible. I don't care if you shoot an sRGB or Adobe RGB. You may think the difference isn't enough. I'm all about getting as much data to work with as possible. And on my YouTube channel, I'm going to teach you how to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's demonstrated to you that yes, you should indeed be shooting in Adobe RGB. And the great news is that's a one-time change. Go into that menu and make the change. In fact, let's hop over in the camera and take a look. Okay, photographer, so how do we change the color space on our OM-1 and OM-1 Mark II? Well, first thing we're doing do is go into camera one, main menu item there, camera one. We're gonna press the right directional pad to go to menu page two. And you see already highlighted at the bottom is color space. We're gonna press Adobe RGB, press okay, and boom, you're there, you're golden. That's all you have to do. Now you wanna make sure that if you've already got some custom modes and you're on sRGB and you wanna to go to Adobe RGB, you'll need to go into those as well, make that change and then resave your custom mode. So thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying me being a smart ass sometimes. And hey, go out there, get some great images. I look forward to meeting some of you out in the field. Take care.